cells survive by changing their internal environment. If the cells need more food, they make a glucose transporter to take in more glucose. If the cell needs water, they make aquaporins to take in more water. These proteins are manufactured through the transcription and translation process, which turn the information in the DNA to mRNA molecules and mRNA molecules into proteins. To understand more about the current state of the cell, we can chop them up and measure all the proteins in the cell. This will let us know exactly what they're doing. However, proteins are fragile, and in the process of chopping up the cell, you most likely kill most of the proteins. So scientists have come up with a way to intercept the signal in the middle, since the quantity of the protein is correlated to the quantity of the mRNA produced, we can measure the state of the cell by sequencing the quantity of the mRNA in the cell. This is commonly now known as the mRNA-seq analysis. Since mRNA are usually attached with a long tail of adenine nucleotide, we can use a poly T medium to extract them out from the rest of the cell. These are usually done on a piece of glass where microfluidic studies have allowed for each of the mRNA to be spaced just right so that there's only a single mRNA strand in a specific spacing. Then there comes PCR, the polymerase chain reaction. Each of the mRNA strains is then amplified into a cluster of mRNA. During the process of amplification, a dye is added so that every letter in the DNA code shines a different color. The millions and millions of dots are now shining a different color in each amplification cycle. And a video of this color is taken using a high quality camera. Some programmers then come in and convert this video into DNA codes, which are then match with a reference genome in the database to know the identity of each mRNA. These data are then encoded into what we know as a count matrix, which two matrix can be compute and compare to understand how two cells are different from one another. This process is called the differential gene expression analysis and a group of genes that are significantly different from one cell to another can be selected from a total population. The DEG differentially expressed gene can then be inspected to understand how two groups of cells are different. For example, if a glucose transporter has a full change of 5, it means that it is expressed 5 times more in group A versus group B. However, the world is never this simple. There are often hundreds if not thousands of genes in the DEGs and inspect them individually is not only inhumane but there are often interaction between genes and pathway that cannot be interpreted on a gene by gene level. One of the solutions is named the over-representation analysis where we look at the composition of the DEG list against the composition of the rest of the gene in the cell. For example, if you have 50 DEGs and 10% of the genes are involved in the replication pathway, but in the 10,000 genes you have collected from the system, only 2% of the cell are involved in the replication pathway. This constitutes an enrichment factor of 5 and allows you to understand that these two groups of cells differ in their replication pathways expression. One of the groups could be growing much more aggressively than another. Alternatively, only 1% of the DEG are involved in the cellular respiratory pathway, but there is 10% of the overall genes involved in the stator pathway in the overall system. It means that the target group has a much lower respiratory functions at the moment. A better way called GSEA, Gene Set Enrichment Analysis, has also been described to allow for systematic investigation of cellular function as a whole without the limitation of selecting the DEG. But maybe we'll leave that to the next video. Remember to say subscribe if you do not want to miss that out. By inspecting the difference in pathway, it can allow us to understand how a drug is being administered affects the environment of the cell without actually giving the drug to an actual human. 
technological advancements allow for sequencing of RNA-seq on a cellular level. A total of 10,000 to 30,000 cells can be sequenced at the same time, giving scientists the ability to understand the overview of the landscape of a cellular activity instead of focusing on a one-to-one -one comparison we described above. In the future, scientists are hoping to integrate more information, such as methylation profile in the DNA or the quantity of surface protein of the cell, together with the data generated on single-cell RNA-seq. With this amount of data, it has become more and more challenging to analyze the data and interpret the result. But this problem most likely is going to be solved with the integration of machine learning in the pattern recognition. It is also going to be likely that you'll be able to walk into a doctor's office to get your cells sequenced for a certain diagnosis, either for sore throat or an early detection of cancer. However, that's a little bit far further into the future, or maybe it's not. For now, it's up to us to just wait and see what happens. For now, I hope you enjoyed this video on RNA sequencing and differential gene expression analysis. Stay subscribed for the next video and we'll see you next time. Bye.